Welcome to Daily Armor. As I was this over the past couple of days feeling a little bit overwhelmed about some things and just pondering on different things and not really having a clear direction, um, I'm just going to say God is so faithful um, and has given me clear direction this morning and I'm so thankful and so grateful for that. We're going to be in the book of Romans today, chapter number 10 and looking at verse number 1. Um, and we'll be um, around this chapter a little bit, um, discussing several several different things. But um, just want to just spring forth with Romans chapter ten, verse number one, and it says, "Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved." So we're talking about praying for those to be saved. And I was thinking about um, that we do pray for the lost. And sometimes that we feel like there's people out there that are not savable, that they are so steeped in so much sin that they are, they're unsavable. And that's simply not true. I um, mean, it even speaks of, of, of this in the scriptures about how um, it, it's almost even easier for that person to see that they have a need to be saved. It's almost easier for those that are so steeped in it and they're so miserable in it and they're so, um, uh, you know, they're just so overwhelmed by it that it's almost easier for them to realize, for them to have those spiritual eyes open and see that they have a problem, for them to realize that they um, you know, need to be saved and that they can't, you know, do anything about what they've done, um, but that they have to turn to Christ. And so it's almost, um, you know, the, the devil wants us to believe, the, the enemy wants us to believe that there's people out there that are not savable and everybody is savable. There's not anything that I have done or that you have done. And I will say again, and I've said this before, I am one of the chiefest among the sinners, that I, it was so obvious um, that I had so much to, uh, you know, to make up for, and I tried, and I couldn't, um, that I couldn't make up for those horrible things that I'd done, and I tried so hard, um, and, but yet, I needed Christ. Um, he was the answer, and that's who I needed. I, I couldn't rely on myself. I couldn't make up for anything. Um, and as I was one of the chiefest and I had so much um, that I needed to be forgiven from, um, but yeah, I was, um, yeah, when we submit ourselves to the Lord, um, He is faithful and He is just. And when we put that faith and trust, not in us trying to make up for it, but that we finally see, I can't do anything about it. And Lord, I'm going to go to hell without you. And when we call out to him and he saves us, he rescues us. And I'm not talking about the kind of saving where maybe that you were, you had a close call and, and you felt like that God protected you from a, from a car wreck or that you were um, involved in a shipwreck out in the sea and that you washed ashore and you were safe and, and somebody dragged you from the shore. I'm not talking about that kind of saving. I'm not talking about being saved from something in a moment here on earth. I'm talking about being saved to from an eternal damnation to living in heaven with the Lord and being with him and in living forevermore in in wonderful praise and honor of our Lord Jesus Christ, saving us from ourself, saving us from ourself, us thinking that we have it figured out. Um, I, he had to save me from me thinking I had it figured out, me thinking that I was okay, that, um, you know, that certain things that took place in my life, that the Lord wouldn't have done those things if I was lost. And I, I, it was for me. It was. It kind of made sense. I made it. I made it make sense. Yet, um, it was. It was no sense. It made no sense. And um, the only thing that I needed was Jesus Christ. Um, but today, I really, really want to focus on those people who um, are almost. They're they're the hardest to reach um, because they're those that are in church that they're trying to do what's right, um, that they are faithful and they're excited about the Lord and they'll talk about God, 
Um, and they will, you know, they will talk the talk and they will walk the walk. Yet, they are, they are banking on their own self-righteousness. They are banking on that, well, I've been in church all my life. Or my daddy's a preacher. Or, um, well, I'm, I'm not doing any of those things. I'm not like those people over there. Um, I'm doing better than my siblings, and I'm doing better than this, and I'm doing better than that, then they're, they're banking on their own self-righteousness, and we need to pray for them. Um, not in any kind of bitterness or any kind of self-righteousness of our own, because I come with nothing. I come with nothing. I have everything because of Christ. His righteousness has been imputed unto me. I didn't have anything to bring to the table. I had to rely on completely rely on God. Um, and when I saw that, it just changed everything. It made all things new. It made me new. I'm a whole new, um, I'm a whole new creature in Christ. I have been reborn, born again. I am born again. I have been saved, saved from, um, the wrath of God, saved from an eternal damnation in hell. And I am promised to heaven by not by me but by God and what a wonderful burden has been lifted off of me and my prayer uh, what I my heart's desire is to see others be saved um, I love this in the in verse number one it says my heart's desire and prayer when when we are coming to the Lord in prayer and it's with our deepest heartfelt plea that we are interceding for others, not just those that are obvious, not just those that may be like me, that that I had some things that I've done, and I, I see that in others, and I cry out for the Lord to save them because it's so obvious, but also that I was uh, one of those church members. I was one of those that was involved. I was one of those that was excited. I loved to hear my my preacher preach. I loved hearing the choir sing. I loved if we had anything going on at the church. I wanted to be involved in it. I I couldn't get enough of being at at, at the church and um, loved loved my home church, a Westland or Baptist church. Just absolutely loved being there. Loved the people. Was drawn there. Um, was you know excited to be there. Wanted to be involved in anything that that I was going to be allowed to be involved in. I didn't care if it was just bringing a, a covered dish to a function. I, I didn't care what it was. I was excited to be there. And I was there lost and in need of a Savior. I was excited to be there because I was trying so hard to get to God, trying so hard to get to Him. And yet I couldn't. We can't go to God, but He can come to us. And when he does, all we have to do is accept him. If you read some more in Romans, it says, verse number two says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. That means they have an excitement. That they are excited about the things of God. That they are, you know, just like I was for eight years of being at West Lenore Baptist Church. For eight years being excited to be there and wanting to be in church and excited through my throughout my childhood on those those times that I got to go I didn't always get to be in church I wouldn't say that I was raised in church even though I did get to go um, from time to time but I was also forbidden to go a lot in my childhood throughout my childhood and I, I had a desire to be there so I had a zeal I had a zeal for God as it, that says they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge so I was excited about God, yet I didn't know him personally. And I didn't think I could. I didn't think that you that you could know him personally, that you really could know him on almost as a for almost like a face-to-face -face meeting with God. But I didn't find that out until that night that I got saved. That it was as if I was meeting him face to face and I know him. That overwhelms me sometimes. I know him personally. I don't just I don't just have to be excited or get excited about him. Um, that, I don't just have a zeal for the Lord, but I'm excited because I know the Lord, and that I know that I am not worthy. 
I know that I am not, I don't bring anything to the relationship. I don't bring anything to the table. Um, but I am a burden on him. I am his responsibility. I am his craftsmanship. I, he gets to decide what he wants for me. And yet, I know him personally. He is my heavenly father. And I adore him. And it overwhelms me because he adores me. And I don't deserve it. But it's that love. When you truly love somebody, you're not loving them for what they can offer. You don't love them because of what they bring to the table. You don't offer your love if you're going to get some some in return, get something in return. It's you know that's with that's love with strings attached, and that's not really love. True love is the kind of love that God gives us, and He gives it to everyone who will freely accept it with no strings attached. But then when we when we experience the love of God, then we want to reciprocate that. We want to give that back to Him. My love is in love is love in return to Him. And we want that for others. My heart's desire is for others to know God personally, like I know Him. Because it is so exciting and it's so wonderful and it's so humbling. And it's so precious. And sometimes I can be thinking about it and I'll just get I'll just get goosebumps because it just overwhelms me. He overwhelms me. And all my heart's desire is for others to be saved. Not just those that um that it's obvious, um, but those that maybe that we sit in church with, that maybe they sit next to us, maybe they sit across the across the the pews maybe they sit on the, in the other section and they don't look like they need to be saved but they need to be saved and that's what we're praying about and we need to pray for those look at verse number three says for they be being ignorant of god's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of god that's what it boils down to be is that those that walk the walk talk the talk, they look like a Christian, they act like a Christian, they are excited about the Lord, they are excited about Christ, they know a lot about Him, but yet they don't know Him personally. And so when you when that happens, then you you form your own self-righteousness that you're you're all about, well, I'm a good person, I do these good deeds, I give to the church. I, you know, I sacrifice this for that, and I don't do this, and I don't do this, and I don't do this, and I do do that, and that, and that, and, you know, so you you are establishing um, your own self-righteousness, but when you do that, you reject the righteousness of Christ, because I don't bring anything to the table. If he does something with me, that's him doing something with me and not me bringing anything um, to the table, what I can offer, I can offer to Christ is just my obedience and my my love that I, I can try. I can't even do it correctly. I try so hard to love Him and and to uh, want to know more and more and more about Him and and to adore Him the way that He deserves to be adored, but yet. I, that's not my set my my righteousness doesn't it always misses the mark but when I'm thinking about that I am I am going to heaven um, if the Lord takes me today I will be in heaven and waiting for you to get there and being excited that uh, you know I'm there and not because of anything that I've done not because I do daily armor devotions not because I'm a pastor's wife not because of anything I've done, but everything that he did for me that Monday night that he saved me and that I had to turn away um, and reject my own self-righteousness. Well, Lord, I do this and Lord, I do that. And Lord, I'm always in church and I want to be there and all these excuses that I come up with. But Lord, my husband's a preacher. But Lord, this, but Lord, that. It didn't matter. He said, you need to be saved. It's not about my righteousness, but it's about his righteousness. He is 
he is the worthy lamb. Worthy is the lamb that was slain for me and for you. And it doesn't matter how good of a person that you are. And it's wonderful if you're a good person. It is wonderful. But you will never experience the joy uh, and the wonder of Christ until you submit and say, Lord, it's not anything that I can bring, but it's everything that you bring. Everything that you bring. It's your righteousness is why I'm going to heaven. Not because of me, but because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. That's why it says, um, that we need that submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. I have submitted myself unto the righteousness of God, and I am praying for those that need to submit themselves unto the righteousness of God. It says, for number four, it says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So it's saying that Christ, Christ is the end of the law. That means the law can only take you so far. And the and Jesus Christ, the 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 slain Lamb of God, the last and the last sacrifice, the best sacrifice, the eternal sacrifice, ended with Christ, ended with Jesus. And for Moses, verse number five, describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on, speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Which, which we, preach. we don't have to try to get to God he came to us through the preaching of the of the word, through the reading and the expounding on God's word. We have Christ. He has He has come to me. He has come to you, and we have His righteousness to um and and through faith, through faith, we just you're calling out to the Lord by faith, bringing nothing but but putting all of your faith and trust, all of your faith and trust in the one who is worthy, the one whose righteousness does satisfy the Father. It does pay the account. It does satisfy the debt that has to be paid, that had to be paid. He paid the price. And what do we do? Verse number nine, and this was verse number nine, um, 10, verse number 13, those are precious verses to me because these, this is where my pastor took me when I was under conviction, when the Lord was dealing with my heart. And I went to my pastor and needed, I, I just was in shock. I was just in dear shock. And he took me to this, he took me to this chapter, this book, and he had me read for myself verse number nine that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And I remember him asking me, he said, Teresa, do you believe that? Sis, do you believe that? Sis, do you believe that? And I said, I said, preacher, I believe it. He says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made Unto salvation, for the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the law and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich, and all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is my prayer. That's what I prayed. I prayed for the Lord to save me. I confessed Everything I could think of, I just put it all out there. Lord, I am so not worthy, but you came to me and you showed me I was lost. And Lord, please save me. And that's exactly what he did. And my heart's desire is for others to know him in that same way. So today, our prayer, not just for those that it's, it's kind of obvious they need the Lord, 
Pray for them and don't think that there's anybody that's not savable because everybody is savable. All they need to do is confess Christ. All they need to do is see their self in need of the Savior, bringing nothing but relying on by faith on Him. But also remember to pray for those that might be that might be sitting um, in the in the same pews as you do, that might be living in the same home that you live in, that might be working in the same establishment that you work at, that might be um, you know that might be neighbors that are just so wonderful. It might be the most, the best people that you've ever met, that they're so wonderful, yet you don't know it. They might be lost, and they need to be saved just as well. When we think about Israel, this if we go back to verse number one, it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. The hard thing about Israel is Israel had the law, and they were banking on trying to keep the law and they were they were so busy trying to maintain the law that they had they had created their own self-righteousness and it was so difficult to preach to them it was so difficult for them to see that they needed to be saved and so what what we're seeing here is that Paul's deep earnest desire was for them to be saved as well that they would one day realize that their true need was that they had to put their faith and trust. They had to confess that, yes, I am fallen short. I have tried so hard to keep the law, yet there's no man that can keep the law save Jesus Christ. He is the only one who is perfect. He is perfect without any spot, without any blemish. Not one thing did he do wrong. He was a hundred percent man and he's a hundred percent God and he was worthy is the lamb that was slain for me and for you. And our prayer today is to pray for others, no matter if they look like they need salvation or not. We don't know. Call out to the Lord on the behalf of your your brothers and sisters, on the behalf of your uh, your neighbors and your and your fellow church members and you know, all these people that we um, that we love and that we adore and that maybe, just maybe, that they need to be saved as well. And so our heart's desire is for all, is for everyone to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Not just know about Him, not just get excited about Him, but to really, really know Him personally. Personally, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon.